Hello, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Today on this wonderful Sabbath, we have a beautiful Bible story for children and adults who will enjoy this story. Well, before we do that, we're going to invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we humbly beg you for your spirit to teach us and guide us. And do be with this video that it may go to many, many people who do not know who is Christ and how can he give them victory in their personal life. And help us understand these things in Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, you guys. So we have a story today, and we have right here the children of Israel. And you know, the children of Israel were many, many, many people. Even God told them not to count them. But there were really a lot of people. But because this is a simple felt Bible story, we cannot fit all the bunch of felts of men and women and children and their possessions and their cattle. But just the similitude, okay, the children of Israel. You guys remember that the children of Israel, by the hand of Moses, where did they go? They come out of where? Egypt. And that's another story I got to do. And also what happens is that God changed their diet. They used to eat flesh and they love leeks, which are like onions, into a plain diet, which was the manna, which is angel's food. But they complain according to Exodus 16 and they didn't want to eat it. Well, today we have almost a similar story here. So we do hope you enjoy it. And definitely, what is the purpose of doing this Bible studies for children and for you older people who are like watching this? If we turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to begin on verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. See, our fathers, our forefathers, we would call the Hebrews, which came out of Egypt, who were the, the seed of Abraham. Right? They came out through whom? Jacob, right? Jacob was born out of one of the sons of Abraham. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, continue. Um, verse 2, And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, which was the spiritual meat. We could say it was the spiritual meat. Um, it could say the manna because angels ate it. But they were also uh, eating the food, spiritually talking like you could eat the little book, which is prophecy. They were eating the words that God gave to Moses, right? And also um, the law of God. It says in verse 4, And they all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. See? There we go. It went a little better. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Today is a story about how they were destroyed and bitten by the serpents. Continue on. Verse 10, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things, and any other stories, many other stories, now all these things happen unto them, for examples, that they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of this world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. We have an example of what happened with the children of Israel, how they behave, how they rebel, how they could have inherited the land of Canaan in 40 days, but they kept on wandering through the desert for how many years? 40 years, correct. So here we have in the felt board a bunch of people which symbolize the children of Israel. So now let's turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 21. 
You can find the books. Ask your mom or dad or your brother to help you out. And there's this little song that also can help you. You might want to search it out. That teaches you how to do the books of the Bible. Maybe one day I'll make a video of that. So Numbers 21. And we're going to be beginning at verse 4. Numbers. Remember, number was the book written by who? Moses. We have Moses over there at the end. Here we go. Follow along. Numbers 21, starting from verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread. Neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. Which was a light bread. Remember I told you it was a manna. It was like a little coriander seed, really tiny. Coriander seed is a seed of cilantro, really tiny, like about that size. And it said, the Bible says that it tasted like coriander seed. Let's continue. And there's no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. They didn't want the light bread. They remember the flesh pots of, let's put this flesh up here, of meat. They didn't want to be picking up this tiny little grain. They wanted the big pots of flesh and leeks and onions and anything their soul desired. Nevertheless, they were not having that diet here. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So we're going to pull out the snakes over here, the fiery serpents. As they're complaining for the bread, they, they want water. Are we little children sometimes complain to our mothers, Mom, I want this. Do we complain like that? Oh, then we're like the children of Israel, aren't we? So imagine all the snakes here that were to bite the children of Israel because they murmured and complained against who? Against Moses and against God. Why are we here? You should have left us in Egypt. Continue on, verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, well, let's find out. Remember, they're complaining. Ah, they're complaining. And then God says, they're murmuring, complaining. They should be happy to come out of Egypt. Remember how they were treated in Egypt? Remember they were slaves, they couldn't keep the Sabbath? They were treated really bad, and they were crying, God save us. And now that God took them out of Egypt, they forgot God that took them out of Egypt. They should have been thankful. Nevertheless, they murmur. The serpents are biting them. And what happens? They go crying to Moses, pray for us. They they repent? Hopefully they did. I'm going to take this off and show you the condition of how they were. The Bible tells us that some of them died out of the bites of these snakes. Let's put some figures here. How did they look like? You see this man right here? The snake bit him, and you see he has marks in his head and his hands, and his neck and his hands, his leg. And then this man also, he's like falling on the ground with the bite snakes in the hand and the head and the feet. And then this man is probably one of the men that died. Many of representing many of those that died. I wish I would have had more to show you how dreadful and how critical this situation was. But you see? Some die, some are really bad, wounded because they murmur. What is murmuring? Complaining, right? Murmuring, complaining. So then after they, oh, some that died, but the ones that live, they were looking at their wounds. Oh, beat, oh, beat, oh, oh. And they were not looking at who? Let's find out at who. So they were bitten, bitten, and they go to Moses. And what does he say? Pray for us. Did Moses pray for them? 
So God could take away all those snakes. Can you imagine how much snakes came in there? And they were not those kind of garden snakes that we see over here. They were those really poisonous snakes in the desert. And just think about it. Why were these not snakes before? The Lord probably told the snakes, go down there to give a uh, way for the people to walk through and nothing, no harm can happen to them. But then they murmured, they're rebellious, they spoke evil, so then this happens. Now, before we continue the story, is it right for us to speak evil? Was it right for them to speak evil against Moses and the Lord? No, it wasn't right, it wasn't right. And I'm gonna turn to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. You know, the Bible shows us that Christ had no guile. There was, he never did any guile. He didn't speak anything evil against nobody. He wasn't gossiping around. No. He wasn't. So let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 22. Were they supposed to be speaking evil against Moses? Or should they tell Moses, say, Moses, you know, when I'm thirsty. Or why tell Moses? They could have nailed down and told it to God. But look what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the counsel. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go to thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. God shows us, gives us guidance about the guile, about how are we supposed to do it when we have a problem with our brother or our sister. We're supposed to come to them alone, try to make peace, reconcile. That's what they should have done. But no, God had to send them snakes to get bit. And some killed. Maybe their rebellion was worse than others. I don't know. But the point was that they all cried. Let's move away the snake. Let's move some of these dead men and some of these really hurt men that are here. Now let's look back again to show Israel. And you must think about it. Have you ever been bitten by the snake? You know how it feels like? I can imagine how it feels like because I got bitten by uh, ants when I was little. And they were hurting a lot. <laughs> I could just think about how in the world a snake bite's going to feel. It's really going to be painful. Maybe there are some who have been bitten by a snake and know how it feels like. But the point is not get bitten. The point is don't be murmuring. Don't be rebellious. That's the point. Just remember, after the bitten, how hurt are they? Like, oh, Moses, pray for us. What does the Lord tell Moses? Let's read that. Let's turn to Durami. I mean, Numbers 21. Over there. Let's look at verse um, 7. Therefore the people came to Moses, rushing to him, and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed, so the serpents were still there. Then I guess they got up after all their falling. Now they ran away, not trying to get caught by the snakes. And what does Moses say? Oh, I'm not going to pray for you. I'm proud enough. I don't want to talk to you. Is he like us? Like we are with others? No, huh? What did, what did Moses do? What do you guys think he did? Yes, definitely. Moses did pray for them. So Moses started to pray to the Lord, as you can see over there. And what happened? Let's see. And Moses, oh, okay. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. So after he prayed, God tells him the answer, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So what I have here in the felt, I have a pole. I'm going to show you two different kinds of pole that I have shown you. So God tells Moses to put a pole <clears throat> and a snake, a brazen snake, right? So I have this snake over here that has wings. And whosoever was supposed to, whosoever wanted to be healed, they were supposed to look at the brazen snake and get healed. Now, you know, besides that these things are examples, what else does this mean? Verse 9, And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. What does the serpent on the pole represent? Because, you know, God taught the children of Israel through the, heaven, through the earthly sanctuary, pointing to the heavenly sanctuary in, like, figures, you could say. You could say. So then that was a figure of Christ on the cross. Now let me put the other one. Where's the one you caught me on? Okay, that's what happened when you lose a felt. It was to represent Christ on the cross. So they, in type, were looking at the ser at the brazen serpent on a pole. Moses obeyed the voice of God. And this was to represent to look upon the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Let's turn to the book of John, <coughs> chapter 3. Alrighty, John chapter 3. I hope you guys are enjoying this study because I am. John chapter 3. The gospel is beautiful, isn't it? John chapter 3. And let's look at verse 14. And John chapter 3 is talking about the conversation between Nicodemus and Christ. Let's continue to read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Just as when Moses prayed, he put the serpent, rising serpent on the pole, they were supposed to look at that type of Christ, and they're supposed to be healed from the bites of the serpents. So we too, like the children of Israel, the devil ensnare us and we sin. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to turn to Christ, confess him our sins, go to him with our burdens, our cares, our worries, our necessities. And that is what it really means. Now I'm going to read a quote from Selected Messages, Book 1. Yes. And looking at page 352. In the wilderness, it's called Look and Live. In the wilderness, when the Lord permitted poisonous serpents to sting the rebellious Israelites, Moses was directed to lift up a brazen serpent and bid all of the wounded look to it and live. But many saw no help in this heaven appointed remedy. The dead and dying were all around them, and they knew that without divine help their faith was their faith was certain. But they would lament their wounds, their pains, their sure death, until their strength was gone and their eyes were glazed when they might have instant healing. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have 
eternal life. John 3, 14 and 15. If you're conscious, 